Hi, welcome back. I've got our two boards out of the clamp. They're glued together, nice and sturdy. I scraped off what little bit of glue squeeze out there was on the back side. And now what I want to do is cut these to length. I'm going to trim off one end and I'm going to cut two 11 inch long pieces. And we're going to use this template to form the sides of the bird feeder. Now you can download this template off my website for free and print it out on your own printer. So let's get started. Okay, I've got our two boards cut to length, 11 inches long, and you will notice when you download the template and print it that it's 10 inches long from the tip to the bottom. Part of the reason for that is because I had to make it fit on the scanner, but it's going to be okay because we're going to take care of that. Now this is sort of self-aligning. This is the point of the template and at the bottom it's four inches across so if you just mark the center of that four inch with a little arrow and then line up the point with the joint between these two boards and line up that two inch mark at the bottom with the joint between the two boards and it's going to be perfectly square and then all you have to do is just draw around the template and just get the outline. We don't, we're not gonna worry about that dashed line there. I'll show you what that is in a few minutes. All right, now we're not gonna cut these sides yet because the square edges on the board are gonna help us. And what I've done is I've set my angle on my miter saw at 25 degrees. And that is the correct angle here. So all we wanna do now is line this up real carefully to the outside of the line and cut that first angle off. All right, and now since we've got the angle set over here, and go ahead and cut the other one the exact same way. All right, and now what we'll do is we'll change this to 25 degrees the other way. Just double check my alignment here. Looks good. And there's the top where the roof will sit on the bird feeder. By the way, always make yourself essentially a zero clearance fence to screw into your regular fence on your saw so that the small pieces don't kick back to the back and uh, that'll make you real happy and it's a lot safer to do it that way. All right now this is a little tricky and uh, you want to be safe doing this to cut these uh, long sides and if your miter saw won't handle this don't even try it just cut it out with a jigsaw and cut a little outside the line and use a sanding block or a plane and straighten up the edges. Now the angle here is 12 degrees and what I've done is I've used the clamp that uh, comes with this saw and I've clamped a board across because the clamp doesn't quite make it all the way. I put a spacer the same thickness as this over here to hold this and keep it from tipping and I've got plenty of pressure on it, so I think we're okay. I'm ready to try this cut. All right, well that worked 
worked out okay. So now I'm going to cut the other one, the same angle, and then I'm going to cut this other side. And we'll have our side pieces cut out and ready to go. All right, we've got our pieces cut out for our ends, for the roof, like that. And now what we need to do is we need to make grooves to hold the plexiglass that's going to contain the seed. Now, I've removed the splitter uh, because I don't want that in right now because I'm not making a through cut. And I want to reduce the height of this to one quarter inch. That should do it. Right about there. All right, and then we want our grooves to be three quarters of an inch in from both sides. Well, we have our sides cut, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the fence. So I'm gonna set the fence at three quarters of an inch. And all we've gotta do is just run this through just like this. And the groove is gonna go the entire length of the side. Just like that. All right, now the plexiglass that I purchased, um, the thickness is 0 0.08 inches. And I put my digital micrometer on the blade and at the widest point, at the widest point of each tooth, it's 0 0.12. So actually it's gonna be uh, four tenths, four one hundredths, I'm sorry, of an inch bigger than the plexiglass, and that's fine. I don't mind if it wiggles around just a little bit. All right, so I've got a push pad here just to make sure that I don't get my hand anywhere close to the blade, and we're ready to make a groove. And there we go. So now to make this one, you would think, well, that might have to be different, but actually, it's exactly the same. And there we go. There's our two grooves. Now, I have done this, as I mentioned before, I have a rough side on this cedar and a smooth side. So I'm putting the smooth side to the inside and the rough side on the outside just for looks and I'm maintaining that orientation. <clears throat> and there we go. All right, that looks pretty good. So now it's time for the next step. All right, I've got the base of the bird feeder here. And the first thing you want to do is mark dead center on the two ends, make a mark. Now, it just so happened there was a knot here and a knot here, big dark knots, and the pencil mark wouldn't show. So as a tip, when you run into an issue like that, just put a piece of blue painter's tape there and make your mark on the tape. Works great. And now these sides, remember that the joint between the two boards is dead center. So all we have to do is line up that joint with the marks that you made and that will be perfectly centered. So what I've done here is um, I've lined this up and made a light pencil mark across here and that will be my glue limit line. And what I want to do is spread glue on here and just clamp these on and glue this. Now later, once the roof is on the thing, I will put a couple of screws in because the entire weight of the bird feeder is gonna be resting on these two side pieces. So a couple of screws will be good, but for now the glue will be great and I don't have to worry about uh, screw placement or anything right this minute. So let's get this glued on, clamped up, and we'll start cutting our plastic uh, to go into these grooves. Side benefit of using this tape is, is that uh, any little glue squeeze out 
um, is going to get on the tape and not on the wood. Not that the birds are going to mind, but when you're doing a nice piece of furniture, that's another little tip. All right, for our plexiglass to go into these grooves, we want to first measure the depth of the groove. Now, the plexiglass is going to slide in and rest on top of the base here on either side. So we just measure from the base up to the top. That's uh, eight and three eighths, so I think I'll make it eight and a quarter. It doesn't need to go all the way to the top. And then the width is just from the bottom of the groove to the bottom of the groove on either side. And that measures 14 and a half inches. So 14 and a half inches is our dimension there. And we'll look at how we're going to cut the plexiglass. Now the plexiglass, when you buy it, comes with a film over it to keep it from getting scratched up. And marking on that film is difficult, but I found that a Sanford Sharpie permanent marking pen in the extra fine configuration marks on that film with no problem. So that's how we'll mark out our dimensions. And then we'll look at how we're going to cut that plexiglass. I've always found cutting plexiglass to be somewhat troublesome. Now, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. Um, if you use a metal cutting blade and a jigsaw, that'll work. Um, I've heard people turn their table saw blade backwards and run it through the table saw. I've actually never tried that. Um, the most common way to do it is score and break. And basically you just score a line several times on here and then snap it and it should give you a relatively clean cut. You may have to do some sanding on it, but I've had varying success with this. Um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Now I've got a steel bar here clamped onto the uh, plexiglass and I've got it lined up, absolutely lined up perfectly with the edge of my outfeed table here so that once I've scored it, I should be able to snap it right in place here. So we'll see how this works. Um, the first time you score, you're basically going through the um, protective cover on the plexiglass, that protective film. And then the next scoring should actually scratch into the surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few scoring cuts here this way. And then I'm going to turn around and make them this direction. Okay, well, I'm getting little pieces of plastic here, so maybe I've scored it enough. And then theoretically, you should just be able to snap this. I don't know, but I like how that's lifting up in the back. Let's just see. Yeah, that actually, uh, that actually worked pretty good. All right, so now I've got the long dimension, which is 14 and a half inches, laid out here. Hopefully this one will be a little bit easier. Okay. Well, that turned out even better than the first one. That's uh, really smooth. All right, so let's see how we did here with our plexiglass. Let's see if this will slide into the groove. Yeah. There we go. That's going to be just right. And that's what's going to hold our bird seat in place. Cool. Now what we need to do is we need to cut the perforated metal base to sit in here. Let's take a look at how we're going to do that. All right, now the metal that I found was at the big box store and this is a decorative 
metal that's black and it's got these little holes and then these little tiny holes. I, it's all I could really find. You may be able to find something better. All you're looking for is a way that should water get in there from rain or whatever that the water can drip through but it won't really let your seeds fall through and it's just forming the base of this. Unfortunately this piece I bought is a little narrow but there's plenty of wood here to catch it on either side. It could slide back and forth but I don't think there's any way it's going to fall out so I could probably cut a full-size piece that would fit in there better but I would only get one piece out of this relatively expensive piece of metal. So I'm going to cut this right along here and just let it be in there loose. I think it's going to be okay, plus I only have to make one cut. So I'm just going to measure this out and mark it, and then I'm going to figure out the best way to cut this. All right, after consulting the source of all knowledge, YouTube, um, it appears that on metal this thin, I might be able to do it using the same technique, which is basically a knife and scoring this a number of times and then just bending it until it breaks. So I've measured out the distance here and of course I couldn't make a mark on this. So I used a sharp nail and I made a little scratch mark on both sides. And then I ran a piece of painter's tape down here just to uh, make sure I've got the line and I'm going to lay this heavy metal straight edge right on right on the edge hopefully right on the edge and it looks like I didn't get the tape on just perfectly straight but I've got it lined up with the marks and maybe that tape will help keep the steel rule from moving. I'm just going to hold this down real tight. Scoring right over this line of perforations, which may actually be okay. I can see I've gone through the paint. Let's see now. Oh yeah, look at that. Just came right off. All right, well that slipped right in there. Um, it does shift from side to side, but uh, there's no chance it's gonna fall out. So I think we're in pretty good shape there. Got the plastic in, now we're ready to make our roof pieces and we'll be wrapping this project up. Okay, now I found four pieces of uh, one by four, so basically three and a half inches wide. And what I did was I set up the table saw and I skimmed off one edge, uh, like I said, just to make a glue edge or a nice straight edge on one side. You could do that at the jointer just as well. Now I've got these boards situated so the edge I just cut is all facing that way. Now what I want to do is skim the edge of two of these and then I'm going to set the blade at 25 degrees. Remember that's our roof angle and we're going to cut the edges of two of the boards at 25 where it'll meet at the peak. So let's get that done. No way I'm reaching over there to get that cut off piece while the blade is running. All right. So this is how, obviously, this will meet up at the peak. Now all I have to do is glue those other two boards, edge glue those on here, 
and uh, that'll make the roof peak wide enough. And then we'll cut these to the length that we want. All right, you're probably wondering, how am I gonna glue these two together and clamp this with this angle cut over here in this side? Well, actually, that turns out to be pretty easy. I'm gonna glue these two together and the angle is facing that way. And then I'm gonna take this pair and turn it upside down and glue those two together. And these two angles here will cancel each other out and it'll clamp together flush just like that. So I'm gonna glue these boards together like this and let it sit for a little bit and we'll be ready to finish this project up. All right, with our roof blanks glued up, I have joined them together in the middle with some blue painter's tape and positioned it here on the bird feeder. And the first thing that I want to do is to mark the exact center of this. It's 19 and 3 quarters, so half of 19 is 9 and a half, and half of 3 quarters is 3 eighths, so we need to be 9 and 7 eighths, and that will be the center. And then what we want to do is install our hinge. Now I've not attached this yet. I'm going to install the hinge first. Now this is just a commercially available some call it a piano hinge uh, that I got at the local big box store. I'll open this up. All right, now this hinge will go up and down. So you wanna make sure that you get a hinge that will fold both directions. And then what you wanna do is just center this on this mark, just like that. And then what I'm going to use is an auger gimlet and I'm going to make a mark dead center and just get that hole started lightly. Now you're naturally going to be putting some downward pressure on this wood so make sure your tape is holding well and that you don't get this out of position. Once you've got a couple of screws in on either side, and then you're good to go. All right, now with the hinge on, that's how you'll put your bird seed in by opening one side. What we want to do now is attach the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue just on this portion of the roof. And I'm going to set this up here and get it in place and shoot a couple of um, pin nails in to hold it. And I want to try not to slop glue all over the place. So what I've done is I've centered this by using my combination square and then I just lightly marked the location on both sides here on the roof itself. Now what we can do is set this aside and apply the glue just to this side here. Make sure you've removed the film from your plastic at this stage because uh, once you glue the roof on, this piece of plastic is not going to come back out. And it would be real hard to get in there and remove that film. Now once this is set up and dried, I would recommend putting a couple of screws in. And the reason for that is because the roof on this with the hinge will take a fair bit of wear and tear over time uh, from opening and closing it. And opening this side will necessarily torque this side a little bit. 
So you want to make sure that you've got it attached real good. There we go. Now, I want to try not to slop this around, spread it around too much. So I'm going to look for my mark. There. Now, if I have to slide it a little bit, I won't make too big a mess. I got it within a 32nd of an inch on the first shot. All right, now that's there. So what I want to do is shoot a couple of pins in. Now we're not going to stress this too much until this glue sets up a little bit. And then the last thing to do is to add our wire to be able to hang this. All right, so the glue is dry on the roof. I've put a screw up here on either side to uh, put a little insurance on that side. This is the side that moves. And I want to show you a little bit of detail. Uh, to hang this, I used a piece of 3 32nd inch wire rope. And this is four feet long, exactly four feet long. And what I did, and I'll turn this just a little bit, is I put a uh, screw eye in right here on either side. That's exactly two inches down from the peak. And I've got a wire rope aluminum ferrule that still needs to be crimped. So I'm not going to put any weight on this yet. Um, I've got to borrow a crimping tool from a buddy of mine. I'm not going to go out and pay 40 bucks for a crimping tool. That would uh, cost me 10 times more than it costs to build this bird feeder. But once that's tightened up, then we'll be able to hang this. I've got a ferrule here. And I've got a fair rule here to form the hanging loop. And I've looped the wire through another screw eye on the opposite side and installed another fair rule there. And if you look closely, you'll notice that I closed the lid real tight and drilled a clearance hole right through the peak to accommodate the wire so that the wire didn't keep the roof partially open. And that will wear over time because this will get some wind movement and birds will be rocking it. And that hole will get a little bit bigger as time goes by as the wire saws on it. But that's going to be just right. I've also installed two screws on either end piece because, as I mentioned before, with the wire attached to this end piece, the end piece is literally holding up the entire weight of the bird feeder. Well, there we go, folks. A beautiful, functional bird feeder made entirely from scraps and just a few dollars worth of supplies you can get at any big box store. I hope you'll build one or two or ten of these and make the birds in your neighborhood very, very happy. Well, you've made me happy by watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next project.